Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. It is Michael Molten, and he is an inspirational, motivational speaker on the subject of addiction. And today, I'm very honored to have him on my show. He's going to tell you a little about himself and what he does, and he has an incredible story to share. So hold your seats and hold on to your pants because he's going to take you away to a story that just is going to make your mouth drop and you're just going to want some more. So Michael, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, Stacy, uh, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate all the things that you do and getting the word out and your platform and how it reaches so many people. So uh, here at M2 The Rock, we're um, we're very grateful to be a part of this. So, um, you know, you know, I'm, you know, I'm an addict, you know, and and I'm I'm addicted to everything. And so, um, just a real short, um, you know, short piece of my story is is that. You know, I, I grew up on the wrong side of the tracks. I, I grew up in a well-to-do uh, family, you know, and so we had money and, and you know, on the outside, grew up in country clubs. I grew up, you know, gambling. I grew up playing golf and grew up, you know, with real estate tycoons and, uh, you know, these men in the locker rooms, they you know, they taught me how to uh, gamble and drink um, and how to treat women and they taught me how to die. And so little did I know, you know, where that coaching would lead me um, to um, a 27 arrest and homeless and then uh, sentenced uh, you know, to prison uh, as a result of, of drugs and alcohol. Um, so it's, it, you know, my story is not unique. I'm not unique, um, but apparently the public uh, thinks I've got a story, um, you know, like Forrest Gump, you know, I was on the was caddy on the pro golf tour and then one of the most well-known, you know, high-end, you know, luxury home builders in the area, you know, building very, the air was real thin for the people I built homes for, um, you know, in the park cities in Dallas, um, yep. in Highland Park and University Park. And, and so, um, you know, it's, it's real money, you know, they got, and they can afford it. And um, that's, that's just their level of, um, of living. So, you know, that's where I came from. And, you know, I had this um, awakening uh, while incarcerated um, that, you know, had this spiritual awakening, you know, I didn't grow up in the church and one trauma I didn't have was religious trauma. You know, I grew up, let me back up a little bit. I, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, um, on the outside, everything appeared to be normal, the perfect family, but right. behind closed doors, there was abuse. Um, and from the, as long as I remember as a child, I was sexually abused by my grandfather on the maternal side. Um, and he was a cop. And so it was a first time I kept a secret and I, um, I held that trauma uh, and pain and suffering, um, for a long, long time. And, you know, and, and so, you know, to find relief, I was searching for visible things to try to fix my invisible problems. Yeah. And so, uh, drugs and alcohol, uh, were my, uh, became my drugs, uh, you know, my, my DOC, which is a drug of choice. And, you know, that led me down to, um, uh, the rock bottom. And mm -hmm. so, uh, so as I was incarcerated after the 27th mugshot, I, um, you know, I had, um, this spiritual awakening. Um, I am second, I uh, did a film, um, about this, a nine minute film, you know, about it. And, and I had this spiritual awakening and it, and it wasn't like, um, you know, Christ, you know, come into my life. It, it wasn't that it just happened. Um, right. and as a result of it, um, I was reading to inmates uh, who couldn't read or write. Mm -hmm. And I found myself, um, you know, you know, doing easy time. And it, and it real, I realized, you know, four or five days later, the reason why I was doing easy time, Stacy was because, um, I was in the safest place in the world. And that was right here, right now, as a result of serving others, expecting nothing in return. Yeah. Because I always wanted what you had. So, and then I'll get to, um, um, you know, after this awakening and, and, and reading to, um, you know, to the tank and listen, I wasn't this, uh, this jailhouse preacher quoting scripture and all that stuff. And, right. and I don't do that today, you know? Um, and, and, you know, when I say Jesus, it comes out norm, just naturally, like I say, Stacy, you know, yeah. it just comes out you know, naturally. I don't use him as a marketing tool. Right. Um, but you know, 
one thing that I did realize is that when I had that awakening, I felt this forgiveness and this peace. Um, we talk about that that void in our heart, that 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 dark space that I kept trying to fill. Yeah. And it was it was filled with the spirit. And and as a result of forgiveness, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, um, first place, you know, I was state first person in the state of Texas history to be accidentally released from prison. And so made the journey uh, 300 miles uh, back to Judge Bennett, who is my professional photographer of all my mug shots. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, but I, I made the journey back uh, 300 miles to turn myself in. And, and she had heard what had happened to me. And she saw the transformation just in my eyes. You know, you, you feel it. You know, when someone's in active addiction, you can see it, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. also when someone's in recovery, you can see it. Yeah. And so she... um. Um, she set me free and, and said, you know, go pay it forward. And that's what I'm doing today. That's beautiful. It's an amazing story. You know, Yeah. It, it, go ahead. No, go. I mean, it, yeah, I, I, I still pinch myself and, you know, it's, you know, I didn't have a business plan when I was locked up, you know, none of this, you know, M2, the rock is, you know, of course my name's Michael Moulton. So yeah. M2. Um, and the rock, I finally realized that all these times I was hitting my head on this rock at the bottom, it was the yeah. same rock. Right. And then I finally realized that all these times it was God at the bottom. So I stayed there yeah. and I let godly men bring me out. And they were uh, prisoners who were doing life for murder who helped me. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's really hard because, you know, there's so many people, 70% of people come from dysfunctional homes. And there mm -hmm. are so many people out there that use, you know, drugs and alcohol as a coping mechanism, even people yeah. who just have hard days at work and they're just under high levels of stress. So many people grab alcohol, you know, or certain types of drugs just to get the edge off, you know, and right. Right. no one realizes the, the consequences and how easily you could become addicted, you know, and right. like you mentioned, an addictive personality there are lots of people out there that have addictive personalities, you know, that can so easily become addicted to, to things. And then there are people who just use it because they just can't cope. They don't know how to cope, yeah. you know, cause they're yeah. hurting so bad. That's right. That's right. And I can relate to all that. And, you know, it leads into, you know, um, what I do today, you know, I, I'm a, uh, they, they say I'm an inspirational, motivational speaker and author, uh, mm -hmm. but I go speak and, and, and the tour is surrounded by, we are all addicts, yes. okay? Uh, all, we are all addicts, you know, drugs and alcohol, you know, it has a stigma. It has a stigma to it because of, um, our behaviors are so severe and then the consequences are so severe. And so it's kind of set that bar that, that high. And they say, well, if I don't do this, you know, I'm not an addict. I don't have addictive personality, you yeah. know? And, um, and that's completely wrong because, um, addiction is simply the street name for spiritual stronghold or false yeah. idols. Mm -hmm. And I can break it down even more simple is that yeah. addiction, it's a person, it's a place, it's a thing. And here's a scary one, Stacy, or a thought that becomes my source. Yeah. So when I am reaching for these visible things to try to fix the invisible problem, right. um, I'm in active addiction. So I always say when I wake up in the morning and my eyes are open, I'm in full-blown relapse. Right. But re but recovery is I recognize the behaviors. Yeah. You know, if I'm wanting to go buy something and I don't need it and I'm, I'm like, I look at myself, why, why am I going to go buy this? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't need this. You yeah. know, what it is, is I'm trying to change the way I feel. Right. And a lot of people so, go from one addiction to the next addiction, you know, even right. when they're in recovery, you know, they, they, they swap addictions, not even, you know, realizing it because that's just the, the mentality. It's, it's breaking that addiction, that behavioral um, yeah. addiction that we carry is very hard to do. And that there's a name to that and it's called cross addiction, mm -hmm. you know, and it's also relapse. I mean, full blown relapse. And if I don't catch it, all right. Mm -hmm. I will end up back drinking and drugging because right. I want more, 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 more. And I forget, um, you know, that the, the, the solution is, is the, the main core root of what the real problem is for me. All right. Mm -hmm. And I hope your you know viewers understand this is that I'm in fear. 
Mm-hmm. That's what it is. I'm in fear and, and I don't, I didn't have the tools on how to process fear. And so the solution to fear is real simple is to talk about it, yeah. you know, with a counselor or a therapist or, or a mentor uh, in the recovery world, they have sponsors and yeah. you know, you literally, you call that sponsor and, you, and our mentor and you say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm in fear and I'm thinking about some things. Um, and the sponsor will literally say, you're making this up. You're making this up and you feel better. You mm-hmm. feel better because you talked about it. It yeah. doesn't grow legs. Mm-hmm. You know, your thoughts don't become your actions. And, you know, that's what I, I work on um, uh, today. Now, I think it's so important, you know, for people to be able to talk about it. So many people keep their pains inside and they don't let go. And that's why I think group therapy or being able to have a therapist or even have your sponsor is so important because once you, it's very hard to get those repressed emotions, all those things that happen to you and ha- things that happen to me and things that happen to other people. You know, a lot of times you repress all those emotions and and that's one of the root causes that brought you to where you're at, yep. you know, in your worst yep. times. And it, the yeah. thing is, how do we release that? There are so many people that have gone through so much because everybody has a story, but you know, there mm-hmm. are so many people out there that ha- use addiction and they use, used, you know, drugs and alcohol as a way to, to cope. But how, you right. know, they say you have to hit rock bottom. But if you recognize right. you have a problem, you know, can you save yourself before that? Can you maybe get the help you need and be able yeah, to get yeah. that repression and all those emotions out? Oh, well said. That is our slogan is, you know, into the rock is raising. We want to raise the meaning of rock bottom. And what that means is we want to raise the bottom. Okay. Yeah. And and getting our message out there uh, to people who um, still have everything. You know, they still have everything and to um, go, man, I hear his story and I don't I don't want that to happen to me or people hear it like I used to do when I had a lot of money and I I was successful by the worldly standards. Okay, but um, is that I would hear, you know, stories of of like mine and I go, man, that's horrible. I'll never be like that yet. Okay, which is an acronym for you're eligible too, And so. You know, so we, that's what we, that is my, one of my missions is to raise the meaning of rock bottom. Right. Um, but, but you're exactly right. And so to answer your, what, answer your original question is, is how do we do that? Is that we educate, you know, we educate and we, and we get it out there and, and it's, it's, it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to, um, uh, you know, asking for help is that slogan and that is accurate and that does work. But here's what saved my life. This is where the transformation came for me is when I said these three words, I don't know. Okay. I don't know why I'm doing the things I'm doing and I'm willing to go to any length to change. Right. And I know it's going to be painful, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's temp, it's just, it's just growth. It's like working out, you know, to get your muscles bigger, you add more weight. Right. And so. You know, the, you know, phases of recovery, there's the detox phase. Okay. That's the physical pain. Yeah. Um, there is the honeymoon phase, <laughs> uh, which is where the, where the dopamine is rapidly rebuilding in your brain and it exceeds its normal balance. Okay. Right. You're like, man, this is great. You know, I love being sober, but then that recorrects itself. And then that's where the wall phase comes in. It's like, man, is this what recovery is all about? And yeah. that's why it's so important you know, it all phases, but it's, that's why it's so important to be plugged into a support group uh, yeah. and, and with, a, with a mentor, therapist, counselor, sponsor, whatever it is, um, to be there during that wall phase, because that's where we take risk and we go do a moral inventory on ourselves. And when we do that, I get to answer the question. Now I see why. I see right. why I, I did. This. And, you know, I find out what my character defects are. And my character defects, that's what relapse behaviors are, you know? Yeah. I mean, so all the way down to if, you know, Stacey, if if I start cussing, okay, if I start cussing, I'm in fear. Right. I mean, it's literally that's, I mean, you know, I've dissected it down that tight in in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, um, you know, and I've got to, I got to talk about it. Yeah. But talking about it's been real hard for me because I have true childhood trauma. Okay. Yeah. Real childhood trauma right? Uh, that, you know, affected mental health. And that's another thing we, we got to address in our next show is mental health. Yeah. Um, sure. Remove that stigma. 
But, you know, and so then when I drank alcohol and I did drugs, I started to feel like you looked yeah. right. I wanted my insides to match your outsides. Right. And so, um, and when I did that, in order to keep that feeling, what did I do? I would do more and more and more. Okay. Right. Then I had consequences. Okay. And so I would drink more to feel good about the bad decisions I was making. Right. And then I would drink and do more drugs because I was creating self-inflicted trauma. So now right. you've got this spider web of all this stuff and you're trapped and it leads to suicide. I mean, yeah. it will lead to jails, institutions, or death. Right. Uh, because we, we truly think that we're bad people. No. Recovery is not about getting good. Okay. It's about getting well. Yeah. It's that simple. 100%. Um, and we're not bad people. No, you know, and I think that's what people think. Sometimes they, they, they're, we, sometimes people can be their own worst critics of themselves, you know. Right here. I mean, I, I still struggle with it to this day. You know, I, 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 um, I don't want to use the word struggle. Let me change the word smithing. It's a challenge for me. It's an opportunity for me to grow. Yeah. You know, I think one of but the, at least I recognize it. I recognize it. That's, that's the great thing is I recognize. Yeah. yeah. That's very important. And I, I, I think one of the things too is is realizing that the past is the past. You can't change the past. You, you can focus on the present and you can make changes for the present to make a fruitful and, and positive future for yourself. Because too many people live in the past. They dwell in the past. Easier said than done. But somehow you have to let go knowing that we can't change what has happened. You know, but... Mm -hmm. We have to we have to learn how to cope with that pain, all those things that happen when you were growing up, all those things that yeah. happen, you know, how do you deal with that pain? How do you let go of that pain and, and get in that pain out of you and then l releasing it, I think, you know, it makes mm -hmm. a big impact and then kind of freeing yeah. yourself from everything that's happened. And I think forgiveness is a part of it too. I feel like if we don't, we don't have to hear someone say, I forgive you. But I think we need to either forgive ourselves for the actions that we've done to, and, mm -hmm. and maybe the actions we afflicted on others, or we need to forgive people who have done things to us. And we don't have to hear them say, I'm sorry, but we have That's to right. try to learn how to forgive them and, and release it, I think. What do you think about that? No, it's beautiful. I mean, I, I can't counter that. I mean, you're, you're exactly right. And, you know, uh, you know, forgiveness sets us free. Um and but but we don't forget okay we yeah. have a memory we have a brain and and a, 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 you know where there's memory there and we yeah. we don't forget uh but we forgive because when i forgave everybody the supernatural happens i mean yeah. the supernatural you know when, when i forgave everybody you know you know for um um you know matthew 6 you know 14 this is my translation he says yeah. um he goes if you forgive the ones who have hurt you, and the next verse says, I'll bless your game. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, because God can't do anything with me if I'm holding on to resentments and anger. Yeah. Okay. If I'm holding on to that, it blocks me from the supernatural, the spiritual yes. life. Yes. And so when we do forgive that, then he uses us. He mm -hmm. uses us to go pay it forward uh, where we get to share that story of, of forgiveness and you know, I even got deeper, you know, uh, regarding my, my grandfather, you know, and, you know, when we have a resentment, Stacy, towards a person, place, thing, institution, whatever it is, um, it's because I play a role in it. Mm -hmm. I play a role in it. Right. You know, if I loan someone $5, okay, and they don't pay me back and I'm resentful at them, mm -hmm. you know what the role I played in it? I loaned them the money, yeah. you know? And so the role I played in it with my grandfather was simply this. I chose to hold on to the resentment. Mm -hmm. I chose to hold on to it and that's the role I played in it. And once that was uh, set free, um, it, it's just been amazing where it's a, um, it's just a, a really free life. So. I think holding on yeah. to resentment is, is the worst feeling. I think that that destroys a person inside is when we hold on to resentment. We don't realize how destructive it could be because every single day, whether you realize it or not, it's eating at you. It's, it's literally right. eating at you. Well, resentment is a symptom of fear, unresolved mm -hmm. fear. 
So when I break down fear, it's an opportunity. It's the opportunity for my faith to grow or it's an opportunity for me to go to prison. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is it. And so if I don't do anything with the emotion or feeling of fear, okay, it turns into a resentment. Mm -hmm. If I don't do anything with that, it turns into anger. Yeah. If I don't do anything with anger, it turns into rage, then to isolation and then into paranoia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that paranoia state is where the thoughts that are in my head, I really believe them and they're in my own voice, you know, yeah. um, as simple as sending, I always use this example as sending a text, uh, to your loved one. Uh, let's say your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you know, you send a text, I love you. Um, and they don't respond and you go through all these stages and then you get to paranoia stage. All right. Yeah. And you th truly think that they left with another man or another woman. I mean, right. that's where we go. Yeah. And then we end up shooting dope in our arm and getting arrested. And she comes, she or he comes down to visit us and said, what, what happened? And they said, you didn't return my text. Said, I'm sorry, but I lost my phone. Right. <laughs> it's that's, you know, it's, it, it blows up and you know, that is, uh, that didn't happen to me, but that, but that's really, that, that's, yeah. that's a simple example of what we do. So what is the solution to that? Talk about it. Talk you know, it. when we get in that paranoia stay, we we call that that person um, and say, hey, I'm in my head right now. And, um, you know, and if, if that situation said called me, I said, OK, you said you love her, but you didn't ask a question. Right. <laughs> you didn't have to respond, you know. Yeah. And so um, and that's where we learned that expectations always sets us up for resentment. Always. Yeah. And that's a very good statement. You know, if we don't have expectations, mm -hmm. then we can't get disappointed. It's when we that's set right. expectations on others and they don't meet up to what we think they should meet up. That's when we fall into that trap of, of those negative emotions that follow. That, that's right. So it's, um, you know, and so that's, that's what I love to talk about uh, is, is, is that we are all addicts. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and that, you know, the seeking the invisible, you know, here, here's the deal, Stacey. My goal is 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 not to influence others. Okay, I don't have that kind of power, right? Yeah. Uh, my goal is not to be popular. You know, uh, a celebrity. You know, my God is he's not interested in celebrities. He's interested right. in servants. Okay. Yes. And so that's not my goal. But my goal is to simply help people see life through God's perspective and not the world's or culture's, you know, perspective. Yeah. And so that is, that's what I live my whole life in. And when I start seeing that and what that means is like when stuff I think is bad happening, yeah. all right. And things that are done to me that aren't okay. Mm -hmm. Why would a God allow that to happen? A loving, good God. Yeah. Well, when I look at it through his perspective, as crazy as stuff is, if I look at it through his perspective, I go and I'm connected. I'm like going, I see you. I see you. And then I get to share those stories on platforms like this, you yeah. know, because, um, my grandfather's story is saving a lot of people's lives. Oh, for sure. It, it's unbelievable because I'm looking at it through God's perspective. Yeah. And, and I've met so many people that had similar situations happen to them and people keep it for secrets, you know, for years. And even yeah. people had that, you know, they may have not touched them, but they, they were, right. They were, um, they w went past the bar, let's say, and, yeah. and then the other person, you know, that child, you know, or that teenager realizes that and the experience, the trauma that those, those, those seconds, those minutes never leave their head. And he, he, yeah. you know, and, and, and it can really, it can really traumatize someone their entire life. It could traumatize them, you know, even there in adulthood in in relationships, you know, and it could destroy you if you don't get the right. right help. And and that's so well said because it's um, you know, it's it's the it's very you know keeping those secrets and and you know and and talking about it and no one's going to believe me. You know, that's what I struggle with. You know, no one's going to believe me. Right. And you know, and 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 my my mission my mission also um have a lot of missions. <laughs> I have you know another mission is that you know I'm not trying to demonize anyone. I'm not trying to demonize my mom and dad. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, campaign against, you know, child molesters. Okay. Yeah. And what does that, what does that look like now that I see it through God's perspective? Mm -hmm. All right. What that looks like is like, wow, what did my mom go through? 
yeah. you know, because of what she did. To, you know, I mean, I couldn't imagine what she went through, you know, right. and what my, what my dad, you know, and so when I look at it through that perspective, I get some, you know, relief, you know, because, hey, resentment, anger is a luxury I don't have anymore. Yeah. It, I don't have, I, I, I can't, um, you know, it's killing the entire human race. Okay, oh, I'm not big sure. on opinion, but no. it's resentments. I mean, that's yeah. what's killing the human race. It is. And you, you see it every day. And it was when, when I learned how to let go of anger and I brought forgiveness into my life, I think it, it, it turned me into a completely different person. And it's like, it's yeah. a powerful thing when you can take, when you can release that anger and you can bring forgiveness into your life, no matter what you've been through um, and not point the finger and try to blame people and just, just work on what happened work on releasing the anger and then learn how to deal with stress, I think is a big issue, especially for addicts, because we're always going to be followed by stress. Stress is just a yeah. part of everyday life. But how do you deal with stress without grabbing the bottle or without grabbing a drink or without going yeah. to drugs? You know, because some people, the moment stress enters their life, they just don't know how to cope. So the first thing that an addict does is they they grab something that's going to relieve them and help them cope with it so they don't have to feel that stress, that's right? You yeah. know, and I hey, listen. I recognize it because I do it, and I did it. Okay, I mean, not drugs and alcohol, but you know what I'm saying. I, yeah. I, I catch myself, you know, I, and you're doing it, and it's um, you know, like it's easy, for, you know. So if I were to give us a, um, a suggestion uh, on how to forgive, um, what works for me is the first thing is is to look at the role I play in it. And when I see the role I play in it, and then I accept it, and then when I've truly accepted it, there are no resentments. So true acceptance has no resentments. Like that's that. what true acceptance is. And so, um, you know, that that's where you know I hear this say, you know, pray and for them for two weeks, okay, <laughs> and, and it'll go away. You know, okay, uh, God, please give them pancreatic cancer and they die a miserable death. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yes. But uh, you know, having run off a car, you know, highway or something like that. But <laughs> but no, I, as, as soon as I look at the role I play in it and accept that, then that's where the freedom comes. And that doesn't mean we go hang out with them. No, I'm not suggesting that. That's that, that God will make that bright and clear. Yeah. Uh, but but the um but because it's about you being free. Um, and then here's the other thing is is that you know, why haven't these people, you know, apologized to me? You know, right. hey, here's the deal. If you think someone owes you an apology, that means I have a resentment towards them. If yeah. I think someone I, this person owes me an apology, that means I have a resentment. Yeah. And you see yeah. that all the time, you know, yeah. a lot of people want that apology, you know, and I've come to, yeah. you know, learn that it's not, we don't have to hear them say it. We have yeah. to learn to forgive. And like you said, that was, I was going to ask you, you know, to give us an example of, of how to get over and, and be able a, a step towards forgiveness. And you just, you just said it right now. And oh, cool. uh, because I think that's very important, you know, and, and and that's a great, that's a great example, you know, and just mm -hmm. to be able to take that, understand, you know, and in your own eyes, realize how you took a part in it and then, yeah. and then let it go and, and say, okay, I, you know, they did this, I did this and, you know, and I forgive myself for doing this and, you know, I don't hold resentments towards the other person. Is that how you would go about it? Is that where yeah, you- Yeah, I mean, I would even break it down even, you know, more simple. Is yeah, that, please. Um, you know, um, I'm resentful at this person because, um, and this is the role that I play in it. That's that's it. I've okay. got to accept the role I play in it. I the, like that. The, the sooner I can do that, accept the role that I play in it, um, the forgiveness uh, grabs a hold, you know? Did you and ever... then sometimes, no, go ahead. Sometimes, Stacy. Sometimes, what the people that I'm resentful for, once I work through that, I actually owe them an amends. Oh, okay. You know, sometimes I owe them an amends, and but um, but yeah, that's that's my suggestion on that. Go ahead. No, I, I like that. I like I like that. You know, you broke it down even simpler, and then and, you, mm -hmm. and it's you know you you realize your part in it, and then you forget you know you you basically yeah. forgive yourself for and, and make amends with yourself and yeah. 
and then you kind of set it free in a sense. Is that? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, so if I pull out, if I'm driving and I pull out in front of someone and they're honking at me and, you know, I'm doing all these hand gestures to them and I'm resentful at that person all day long. Okay. And it ruins my day. Well, there's two things happening there. What's the real problem? Yeah. Wasn't that guy. Okay. Or, um, I go, you know what? Here's the role I played in this. I pulled out in front of him. Yeah. I pulled out. That's the role I play in it. And I'm going to accept it. And it's like, ah, you know, right. and then, and then sometimes it, you know, it gets, you know, deeper, it, you know, I always say this is that, is that, you know, myself, my whole life, I was watering the leaves of the tree, wondering why the tree was dying. You know, what's the real root? You know, yeah. we got to get down to the root of what the problem is. And every time it's fear, it's, you know, it's fear. It is fear. I think fear plays yeah. a big role. A big yeah, role. fear of, of losing something or, you know, something's going to be taken away from me. And, you know, I struggle with, um, I'm a lot better and, you know, abandonment issues, obviously. And then, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, loud voices and, um, you know, fear that, you know, I'm in, uh, you know, I'm in a relationship engaged to an incredible person. And when we have healthy conflict, which is new, you know, healthy conflict where we're mm -hmm. talking and let's just say voice inflection goes up, I immediately will go in my head saying, um, I'm going to be homeless. That's how radical sometimes I'll go in my head. Right. But then I have to calm down and breathe. And, 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 and I give her a really good listening to because she's just trying to share with me how she feels. And because I listen, she actually helps me. Right. And plus, she's got a radio and TV background. Sometimes I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of times when I get amped up, it's because she's right. Yeah. Sometimes the truth could hurt. You know, we, even though we know yeah. somebody else is right, we sometimes don't want to hear it, even though we know that they're right. <laughs> well, well said. Well played. <laughs> but I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to the next shows. And, I, you know, I'd like to tackle tackle these tough topics, you know, and 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 solutions to trauma and address you know things that that people want to hear that are um they're too i don't want to scared or embarrassed or not brave enough to ask you yeah. know and and so and then a big thing is is helping the families you know the families of the loved ones you yeah. know they actually you know to tease that topic i mean the families are actually sick or sicker than the actual addict yeah because their drug of choice is actually the person who's in active addiction. Yeah. It's very no. true. It's very true. You know, and it, and it's sometimes hard because if you come from a dysfunctional family, you know, it's hard to separate sometimes yourself from your family. You don't want to, but sometimes you have to separate yourself or give yourself distance because it's an unhealthy family role. You know, right. maybe you could see them, you know, and, and say, you know, and visit for a short period of time on a, on a, on a holiday or something, but sometimes being around somebody, you know, or more than one person, you know, that has dysfunctional behavior that really triggers you in a not so good way. That's a hard, that's a hard, that's a hard, uh, you know, problem that a lot of people tackle. I love talking about this stuff. I mean, I love it. And, and when I, the reason why I love talking about it is because I use my personal experiences. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't talk about building a skateboard company. You know, I don't have a personal experience. Yeah. I'm gonna lie to you, but <laughs> as far as using these personal experiences and, and the solutions to them, I love talking about stuff like that. Yeah. I, I think these would be good, great topics to, to, to tackle. Because I, I think so many people go through all these things and, and then I, I even know, you know, it's a lot of times I, I meet people, I know that they, they are either in recovery or they, they have addiction problems because you, when you, when you know so many people, you know, you know, the behaviors, you know, you know, how mm -hmm. people act, you know, you know, how people talk, you know, the body language and you could just tell, you know, and, um, you know, you could just pick up on the energy, you know, and, uh, yeah. but I do, I do feel bad for people who are kind of, they stay in a closet, you know, either they stay in denial and, or they're just too, um, embarrassed or, or afraid to open up to others about what's going yeah. on in their life. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 um, it's that stigma, you know, and, you know, if someone's listening or watching and. You know, if, if you have to, you know, if 
when I would explain, uh, when I'm explaining, I'm lying. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, uh, but when I would, you know, make it bright and clear that, you know, I'm not an alcoholic. I, I just, I just drink, I just, you know, I cut back, I'm drinking only, you know, four drinks a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a red flag because I, I don't, I don't talk like that about cereal. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I don't talk you know, about, about anything else, but I'm just cutting back. And the thing is, they come up to me and they say that I didn't ask them anything. Right. You know, I didn't ask them anything. So if that has to be explained, what they're really doing is crying out for help. Yes. They're crying 100%. out for help. You know, it's it's that deal asking for a friend. Hey, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah. And so and sometimes that's real, but it's um, but the um, but yeah, it's it's um. It's something that needs to be addressed. hundred percent. And you know, and the other thing I love to talk about is the real crisis. Our real crisis today is the missing man. It's the nuclear family. You yeah. Know, it's time for, it's time for men to take back the dinner table. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's definitely a, a topic that needs to be addressed in our society. Now, right. if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to emphasize the listeners, a couple of point important takeaways, what would you like to say to them? Um, true acceptance has no resentments. Yes. That's one of the main things is, um, and also that we are all addicts. We're all addicts. We're, we are addicted to visible things to try to fix our invisible problems. Yeah. Um, you know, and, 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 and what is the solution to fear? The solution to fear is to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my personal story is, is, is what got me to the other side was a spiritual awakening. Um, a relationship with a God of my understanding, um, which is Jesus Christ, not the church, Jesus, not religion, Jesus, you know, the, the true Christ in, in the book, you know, the Bible. And yeah. I believe in that. Um, so um, that's what's working for me. Yeah. Um, and so that's um, that's a takeaway right there. Yeah, that's a lot to take away. It's, it's a lot of takeaways, but it's, it, they're great yeah. takeaways. I like them. Yeah. Yeah. They have important meaning to them. Well, before you go, can you tell everybody about your new book? Because it's an amazing book. Ah, I want you to tell people. Yeah, so we um, we just, um, we signed with um, uh, Krishanda um, Lee Perez out of Los Angeles. And um, she is uh, writing our book and, um, and, and we're going to turn it into a film. Um, so it's a, um, really excited about that. So it's called three, you know, 300 miles. Uh, it's a journey that I made, uh, back to uh dallas um so yeah we're looking forward to that it's 300 miles and uh so stay tuned we're looking for a september of 24 release on that so oh, excellent and that has been and that deal and we can talk on the next show that has really talking about forgiveness you know i've had to go open some doors that i had nailed shut yeah and so what do we do when we go into the past okay right. we can't go there alone and no. so you know, so, so some things, you know, were, were coming up and as a result of some fear that I'm going through and just my life today and stuff like that, that, you know, it, that started triggering stuff and I, and I'm, you know, I got, got emotional, you know, and so yeah. I had to really look into it, but it was an opportunity for me to grow and look at it through God's perspective, right? Of, you know, of what, what the mission is. So, um, but yeah, 300 miles, um, super excited about it. And oh, so it's so going to awesome. talk about the cool thing is this book is it's going to be, um, uh, it's going to tell the story. Um, but when people close it, all right, the people who wrong me are the heroes mm -hmm. because I saw it through God's perspective. Right. And so that's the way I want it to be, uh, because they're truly forgiven. Right. I and I don't that. even talk to these people anymore. <laughs> I love that. So, you know, and I thanks. think that, you know, it's okay. It's okay to separate yourself from people that you, cause you yeah. don't want to be around people that are going to drag you down. You know, the people yeah. that you know, that are going to be the vacuum that sucks all that energy from you. Those are the people mm -hmm. you want to stay your distance. But like we said earlier, as long as you can forgive in a healthy manner and let go and then move forward in your own life, that's what matters. Amen. And Amen. Well, this has been amazing, Michael. I am so, you know, Michael is going to be, he's part of our podcast community. He has a podcast series and he also has a, a podcast, M2, The Rock on our um, podcast channel. And he's going to be doing a series of different topics related to addiction and, you know, family trauma and getting through trauma and
and lots of different, he's going to be given lots of different tools, strategies, and techniques on how to overcome the hardships in your life so you can live a happy, healthy, and productive life. So thank you so much, Michael, for coming on the show today. You know, I'm very, very excited. So when I, well, thank you, Stacey. And when I say thank you, okay, is that this helps me. I do this because it helps me stay clean and sober and me sharing and getting out of self for 35, 40 minutes. All right. Mm -hmm. It puts me in the safest place in the world. And that's right here right now, because that's where God's at. Right. I love it. I, and I agree with you a hundred percent. I'm on the same road you are. And also for your viewers, cowboy fan. Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> everybody up there in New Jersey. Well, I always said, I said the Cowboys always had the cutest little butts. And I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never said that. No, I know you never said that. I would always right. joke around and then when, because we, we would have the, uh, you know, big, a lot of Giants fans over here. But I'm like, you know what? Dallas does have cuter little butts over there. I've got to admit. Uh, you know? <laughs> you're funny. You're funny. Well, I'm excited for the next show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. It's great having you on the show today. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much, Michael. Yes. Thank you, Stacey. All right. You have a great day. Yes, you too.